issue as well. All right, you guys, let's move on from health care. We know that there's a, uh, there's a vote later today in the House. The Senate has said it's not going to deal with it. It's just going to kick it out. So even if somehow there had been an agreement in Congress, the president would have vetoed it anyway. anyway so it'll yeah. be interesting to see, though, again, whether these issues get talked about. By the way, I read an a really intriguing statistic this morning. Um, and maybe you can, so let's stay on yeah. this for just a second. Sure. Maybe you can speak to this. And I want to try to find the number. All right, so uh, in the latest polling, which is very different from even a year ago or even six months ago, 40% of Americans say they want to see health care reform go away. 41% mm -hmm. of Americans say they want to keep it in some form or fashion, not, not necessarily voting for what's there now, but some form or fashion. That's a complete split. That's, that's a tip. To the side of keep it, Chris. Yeah, well, I, I, you know, as a social scientist, I, I, I would have to certainly look at um, what were the questions, how what was the survey the questions? designed, you know, those kinds of things. And I, it, it, it may, in fact, be an aberration. I, you know, I don't know because to have such a switch in yeah. such a short period of time um, raises questions of methodology and all of those other kinds of things. So and how I don't it was know. messaged yeah. to them. Okay. Yeah, I, By I'm the not way, sure that that's strong accurate. opposition in, uh, in the same Associated Press GFK poll found uh, it's still at 30%. So 30% of Americans who were polled said that they strongly are against it of that 41% or so who, who don't like it. Yeah. All right, now here's the other number. And, and Richard, I'm, I'm curious to know what happened here. Uh, as for the repeal, only about one in four say that they would do, it, do away with the law completely. Among Republicans, support for the repeal has dropped sharply from 61 percent after the elections to 49 percent now. Do you guys give yourselves a pat on the back for that? <laughs> Well, I don't, I don't think it's a question of whether or not we get a pat on the back. I think what's happened is the echo chambers have sort of quieted after the election. So since the Republicans aren't really out there messaging it, messaging it very heavily, um, you know, not a lot of people are talking about that. But I think on top of that, the American people are more concerned about, you know, they're more, they're more concerned about jobs, they're more concerned about economic growth. And what they're beginning to see is they're beginning to see a White House um, and, a, and a Democratic Senate that is pushing forward on jobs and economic growth. We've seen a decrease in the, we've seen a decrease in the unemployment percentages, as well as we've seen, uh, we've seen a decrease in the payroll tax. Everybody got their forty dollars back on their paycheck. So the American people, Republicans and Democrats, are pretty happy with the administration right now. That is why we're seeing an increase in the president's approval rating to fifty-three percent. Your thought? Well, I, I, I mean, I think certainly, you know, they, there was a lull. Um, you know, there was the kind of Christmas uh, break. Lull. Um, I think you'll see the conversation changing uh, dramatically now, uh, now that folks are paying attention to what's actually going on. So how hard do Republicans push for health care reform? And, and, I mean, obviously the repeal won't pass. I, I'm not clairvoyant, but I can tell you it certainly wouldn't get yeah, past the president. It's not going to happen. Um, but, but what about the replacement plan? Yeah, well, I think Republicans do, in fact, have to look at a replacement plan, a replacement pa uh, plan that is fiscally sound, um, one that certainly makes sense in terms of who's covered, all of those kinds of things. I, I, I think Republicans absolutely have to do that. I don't think that Republicans simply say, uh, well, you know, we tried repeal, it didn't work, let's move on. I don't think that's what's going to happen. I think what Republicans are going to do is uh, going to be very strategic about how we look at it. What are the surgical cuts? No, no, puns, no pun intended there. Um, <laughs> what are the surgical cuts we can take to the legislation? And I think that's what's going to have to happen. All right, let's move ahead with a, an op-ed that's in by uh, Tony Blankley today in the Washington Times. I don't know if you guys have read this. Uh, mm -hmm. Richard, it says that, that the GOP should avoid being timid in 2011. Now, I know you're a strategist for the opposite team, for the Democrats, but if you could just maybe put on just your game hat, no matter who you're playing for, what would you tell the Republicans? And, and this article lays it out like this. There are two very s different strategies being considered by authentic conservatives, according to this op-ed. Uh, number one, attempt to govern from their majority in the House and actually try to start the process of reducing the cost of entitlements, most conspicuously Social Security and Medicare, yeah. um, as a path back to prosperity and good jobs. Or option number two, behind door number two, <laughs> recognize that the GOP cannot govern without holding the White House and that therefore they should not touch entitlements but merely tinker with discretionary spending and frame issues for 2012. In other words, do they go strong? Or wait. 
Um, if I were the Republican image consultant, and I won't give away all the goods because that means that we'll be in trouble in 2012, but <laughs> I, think, I think the key for us, I think the key for the Republican Party, um, image-wise, is to tone down the rhetoric and to tinker with discretionary spending, like the, like the, like the article says, um, and you know, just work on framing messaging and beginning to create frames for 2012. Because the Republicans are really good at messaging, they are really good at creating the echo chamber, the key is to tone down the rhetoric and create a smart echo chamber that will work for them in a lot of the swing states. I think you put folks like Sarah Palin to bed, um, and you find folks like the Mike Huckabees of this world, the Tim Plant of the world, to begin to articulate your messages. I mean, on top of that, they have more governor's mansions than we do, so they have a lot of governors they can use to articulate this message and this image of we're the party of fiscal responsibility, look at what we've done so far in the past two years, now give us, control, give us the keys back so we can control the White House. Whether or not they should have the keys back is another question, but if I was a GOP strategist, that'd be my suggestion. Well, and you know <laughs> what, I know you don't want to give too much away, but it's interesting, what does that exploit in the Democratic Party? Oh, just tell us. <laughs> um, I won't say too much, but I would say I think what, what the, one, the one problem that we face is, as Democrats, and the reason why I, I do what I do is because we're not the best messengers as we should be. Um, and we re definitely need to work on our messaging and creating our frames, where the Republicans are better at creating their frames than we are at creating our frames. So if they get a head start at creating their frames going into 2012, um, it'll put us in, uh, we'll, we'll be sort of be behind the buck a little bit. Your thoughts? Well, this is exactly why uh, Republicans don't take um, strategy advice from Democrats. Um, look, uh, first and foremost, uh, yeah, of course, you would want us to, quote, unquote, t turn down the red. In terms of what Democrats want us to do is they want us to uh, tone down the, quote, unquote, rhetoric. Well, um, the, quote, unquote, rhetoric is, in fact, strategy. The, quote, unquote, rhetoric is, in fact, messaging, which you've just admitted that, in fact, um, Democrats are horrible at doing. So from the standpoint, in terms of turning down the quote-unquote rhetoric, first of all, I don't know what rhetoric it is that you're talking about specifically, but I think if you look at the base of the Republican Party, I think if you look at conservatives, that in fact conservatives would say, um, you know, to hold folks accountable, to keep feet to the fire, not to quote-unquote turn down the rhetoric, um, whatever that is. Uh, last well, thoughts from you, Richard, and then we are going to lose you off the board, but we got you back for now. <laughs> Well, I, you know, when I when I mean when I say the word "turn on the rhetoric," I mean the the hate the rhetoric that is being issued by Sarah Palin and the members of the far right. Sarah Palin has the lowest approval ratings of all times right now because people don't like the rhetoric. That rhetoric just doesn't seem to work. The hate speech, the you hate know, speech. the comparing President Obama to Hitler, that type of stuff doesn't bode well. It doesn't poll well for it doesn't poll well for Republicans. It really doesn't poll well for Democrats. American people just don't like when you go negative. So the strategy is to play nice with the president so that you guys can get a chance to sort of make some gains. If not, they, you guys only have one chamber. We have two. No. We have the chamber and we have the White House. Well, Ooh, well, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, we're you not, had. <laughs> uh oh. Um, we got to let you go. Richard, come back Thanks anytime. I, I can tell that you guys, uh, you both live in D.C. I won't give you each other's addresses because we want to keep it nice. But thanks for being on the program. Hey, everybody, thanks we're so going to. Absolutely. We're going to take a quick commercial break. By the way, the chat is up.